Morning all. Now today I want to look at this little module that I bought a while back, but I've not done anything with it yet because there's a bit of a complication. So this module is described as a fuel gauge, but you can see from the uh, pins down below that it's also I squared C, and that was the complication that kind of put me off using this, but I'm determined to do it now, so let's get on with it. So this is a LiPo fuel gauge, and it's based on the MAX 17043. Now you might just be able to see 17043 on the top of the chip there, but it is an extremely tiny chip. If you compare it with the 0.1 inch spacings of the pins, the pads on the board, you can see that the chip's very tiny. It's actually 2 millimeters by 3 millimeters. So the purpose of this module is that it can tell you how much power there is left in a LiPo battery or cell. It's a single cell uh, LiPo fuel gauge. So for example, this 240 milliamp hour miniature LiPo cell, the module can tell me how much power there is left in it. But in order to get that information, I need to talk to the module over I squared C, which is a digital two wire interface. So here's the data sheet for the MAX 17043 and 17044. The 44 is for two cells and the 43 is for one cell. Well, I've got the 43. And it's described as a compact, which it is, low cost one cell or two cell fuel gauge with low battery alert. And uh, here's the eBay listing for this module. Um, it's fairly expensive, $8.00. 66 and it's available from my favorite seller Alice 1101983. I'll put a link to this uh, eBay listing in the description. Now what they don't show you in the eBay listing is that you also get this little wire um, with a JST 2 pin plug on it. JST is Japan solderless terminal. It's one of these mini uh, 2 pin connectors. Now if you remember my wearable device project, which consists of a miniature OLED display, I won't focus, but uh, and also a 3.3 volt Arduino and uh, the same little LiPo pack. One of the criticisms of this is that uh, the LiPo pack was able to run to a very low voltage without battery protection. So what I'm planning to do is introduce battery protection and the fuel gauge and then instead of just saying the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog the display could actually display something useful which will be the state of charge of the battery and it should be able to tell us how much charge there is left as a percentage. So my plan is to introduce these two boards um, this one we've seen before it's the TP4056 LiPo cell charger with uh, battery protection components on board and a micro USB and the MAX 17043 LiPo fuel gauge. Now the way the pins are arranged on the fuel gauge it looks like the best arrangement will be to piggyback it on top of the charger board a bit like that. The other thing I need to do is on that charger board you may just be able to see a 122, a 1K2 resistor connected to pin 2 of the TP4056. Well, that'll need to be changed to a 10K resistor, much as I did on this board, to set the correct current for this small LiPo pack. So that's the 10K resistor fitted to the TP4056. And that sets the charge current to... Uh, 130 milliamps, which is about half C um, when you take into account a 240 milliamp hour cell, so that should be about right. So these two pins on the fuel gauge there and there are positive and negative of the battery. They're just duplicates of what is coming in on this connector. So they will sit directly above positive and negative of the battery on the charger board so I'm going to sit this module directly on top of here and hardwire it with a couple of wires running through. So there's the fuel gauge module mounted 
piggyback on top of the charger board which has the new resistor. Now I'm going to mount that on top of the LiPo pack with a bit of this um, Velcro sticky stuff which I think came with one of these little uh, sensor lights. That one I think, yeah there's the square. So I'm going to cut a bit of that Velcro, um, stick the charger board onto the back of the LiPo pack. There should be enough separation through the Velcro so that heat doesn't get transferred from the charger board to the LiPo pack. I've cut down the little wire and I'll solder that onto the LiPo pack battery connections. So here's the finished assembly. I've also now connected in a micro USB to actually charge the LiPo pack. Now I'm hoping that the LiPo fuel gauge won't mind the pack being charged and it'll say something sensible but we'll see once we start getting data from the fuel gauge back through the Arduino and onto the display. Um, there's the Velcro holding the LiPo on the back of the charger board. Now what needs to be connected now is these two out pins, out minus there and out plus there, need to connect across to raw and ground on the Arduino so that will provide power from the LiPo through the battery protection circuit to the Arduino. And then SCL and SDA, which are the I2C uh, clock and data pins, will need to be connected to, well now it's A4 and A5, and they're on the back there, um, just at the top of the board. They don't have header pins on yet, but I'll solder a couple in there, because on a 328P it's A4 and A5, which are the hardware I2C pins. Pins. So I'll put a couple of connections across through there. Ground will connect naturally from this point across to here. And VCC on this chip gets its power from uh, directly from the LiPo. So as long as the voltages on SCL and SDA are sufficiently high, and they don't have to be that high, uh, it doesn't matter that um, they are at a different potential to VCC or VDD it is actually. Uh, on this chip. So here's the 80 mega 168 slash 328 pin mapping and you can see on the top right of the chip there we've got PC4 is also ADC4, that's A4, which is also SDA, I squared C SDA, that's analog input 4, and the one above PC5 is ADC5, that's analog A5, which is SCL, S clock on analog 5. So in terms of hardware this is it finished. We've got uh, the little assembly here connected through black and white there are power and green and yellow are the uh, clock and data for I squared C connected through to the 3.3 volt Arduino and that goes to the OLED display. So that's it but now of course nothing's going to happen until we get um, some I2C software running and also of course some software that can talk to the Max 17043. So a quick search online for Arduino and Max 17043 and in the playground.arduino.cc there is something here on the Max 17043 and it says an Arduino library is available so I'm going to use that library because I don't want to develop this software myself. I want to get something working quickly. And that'll be in part two where I try and get the software for all this lot up and running.